All right, my friends, welcome to episode 437 of Prof and Dev Play Games. My name is Larry, the professor at Prof Plays Games on Blue Sky and also Prof and Dev Play Games on YouTube. Over there is Anthony the Dev at Summer Speak on Blue Sky. How are you doing, man? I'm doing I'm doing well. Um, it's been a, been a chill weekend overall. Um, yeah, it actually feels like summer up in Seattle, which is not always par for the course for this time of June. So sometimes it's rainy. Oh, yeah, that sometimes people the general statement up here is summer doesn't start until July 4th. Um, ah. Because June, a lot of times can still be pretty overcast and rainy, like yeah. mid 60s uh drizzly but uh not this year this year we're getting like mid 70s and sunny so probably a nice. lot like you have um well it's, it's quite hot here it was like 89 today 90 oh, yesterday yuck. it was 91 yuck. for the daughter's birthday party um Oof. right now it's 77 degrees so my fan is yeah on it's a little, little, little hot for me yeah first time of the season the fan is on out here in the booth so uh, well, this week we are talking about the Nintendo Direct that did happen this last week. I swear to God, it feels like it's been a month since it happened, but it was only less than a week ago. But we are going to run through everything. I was really excited that most of the things did not leak ahead of time, which there was yeah. some leaker drama this week. So we saw that. figured out why. Yeah, Midori and obviously imploded, but then Pioro as well was basically yep. getting their information from the back end of the Nintendo website. Yep. Um, so either they're an employee or they know someone who is. Yeah, the, they had some way of getting knowing that data, and it now looks like Nintendo's like, fine, we're just not going to update the back end mm -hmm. until the Direct goes live. Guess what? That info's not getting leaked now. There so. were no leaks. I was so happy not to know the things ahead of time. Um, so we are going to jump into them piece by piece, but uh, overall, what were your thoughts on this Direct? Pretty excited, overall. Yeah. A lot of neat stuff in there, and really is a kind of a swan song for the Switch, most likely. Um, a lot of the stuff here, uh, pretty, is, pretty good yeah. way. I just, um, I will get to, uh, Zelda announcements, but I'm still upset. We don't have, um, uh, Wind Waker HD. My um, wife was like, I was, we were, you know, I asked my daughter I, what she, uh, wanted and we'll get to that later. But my wife said, whatever you think is happening, I think is not happening. And I was like, no, yeah. it's, this is the time for Wind Waker. And it's, it did not happen. I mean, we got something different. It's cool. But Way I better. still would I'm... love would love to have those other things too <laughs> because they don't live on a system that's easy to play them. Exactly. I will take a new Zelda over an old Zelda any day. And my sure. daughter and I were cheering on the couch. And I was I was in tears when it was done because I was so happy for what it was. And it was exactly what my daughter predicted. It was like, wow, you should be on my podcast <laughs> making predictions because, good God, I missed everything. Um, but, yeah, I'm super, super happy. This If this is the swan song for the Switch, it's got a banger year. Um, I cannot believe these things are coming out this year. So um, why don't we jump into it? Yeah. The first one was Mario and Luigi Brothership, which is a brand new Mario and Luigi style RPG, um, not done by Alpha Dream. Alpha Dream went bankrupt, yep. I guess, in 2019. This is a new team, which Nintendo is being vague about, like always. Yep. But the art style, I think, looks pretty rad. It's more cartoony, a little more cartoony than previous iterations. Uh, yeah, um, definitely a lot of ways. I like looking at it. I was like, yep, a little bit more cartoony, but it fits kind of what they you would expect from Nintendo's how they focus on graphics on the Switch more mm -hmm. than anything. So I'm like, yep. yeah, I get it. Um it's very cell shaded. I have the trailer going. Yes. Um, yeah, me too. Um So it's a good look for it. It's a really good yeah. look. Um I'm surprised someone else mentioned it after this was over and I was like, "Oh my god, they're right." Super Mario RPG came out the remake, and then Thousand yep. Year Door came out, and now this brand new one. Like in the span of a year, three of the three types of Mario RPGs all coming out. Yep. Um, that's I think that's good news. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of crazy uh, to think that that actually happened. Um, I have never really played many of the Mario and Luigi games, if any. I played the one that came out on the 3DS around 2015 or so. I can't remember which one it was. Um, it was just long and monotonous, and I was I put okay. it down for like ten hours or so. This looks infinitely more interesting. 
Um, it's got some characters. This world is like electric in some way. The characters have like electric sockets for faces and things like that. Yeah. And there's a light bulb on top of this tree at the end of this trailer. So. So I'm looking at the. The last one that came out was Bowser's Inside Story plus Bowser's Junior Junior's Journey in 2018. Yeah, and that was a remake of Bowser's Inside Story for 3DS. That yeah. added that kind of uh uh what was the one on the Switch? Uh, boy, 3D World and Bowser's something. I'm blanking right now. That my daughter and I played. So like the extra tacked on kind of like here's some yeah. more stuff. Oh yeah. in the remake system was that then there was the one yeah 3ds was paper jam mm. that's not yeah the one paper jam huh not the one you played that was i don't on think 3DS. i don't think that's when i played that wasn't a remake dream team on the 3ds that's, that's the one i played so there were two on the 3ds straight up like originals on the 3ds um bowser's inside story is the was one that i yes i believe may have played a little of that one but i definitely didn't play partners in time or Superstar Saga, so I'm. But yeah, I'm, I know this is a continuation of like kind of the RPG. It's like they split the RPG. There's like route. three timelines, right? Yeah, it's like which which division do you, do you go towards? Um, yep, you have the paper one, which followed Super Mario RPG when Square left to, to do yep. PlayStation stuff. And <clears throat> when we get to what we've been playing, I'll talk about um, Paper Mario. Um, and then they did the Mario and Luigi, which is another splinter. And then Super Mario RPG is the original, but they didn't, yeah. there were no, I mean, Paper Mario yep. was the sequel of that. So, and I would say even the, and as you've played the latest Paper Marios, the Paper Marios have gotten further and further away from oh, big like, straight, R, straight RPG. Yep. Um, yeah. Origami King was not RPG very much at, at all. all. Yeah. Yeah. That, it makes sense. That's kind of how they, I feel like that, that splinter has worked out in the yep. end. Um, mm-hmm. And they've kind of now using the the Mario and Luigi side to continue the the main aspect of Mario RPGs. Um, well, this this direct started off with a brand new Nintendo game that no one knew about to no start <laughs> off with, and I was like, if we're yeah. starting here, holy shit, where are we ending? Yeah, where are we going? Um, yeah, that was exciting. Uh, they which then in... we lit. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, please. Yeah, then they go into it. stuff we kind of know. With, know about Nintendo World Championships, NES edition. Are Just you showing off kind of yet? what it is. Yeah, I pre-ordered it mostly because oh, of okay, the cool. goodies that it comes with. It's neat. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought the same thing. Um, but this had oh. even more this this trailer had even more um to the the micro competitions than I thought yeah. it had. It had a bit more depth, which was exciting to see. Yeah. Um it makes me excited to see if they do a uh Nintendo World Championships SNES edition at some point. Like they, um, they never did SNES remix. They only did NES remix. So I, I know have a history of not going that far, but I I hope they do. Yeah. Um so they yeah, went to that. Um and that was a game I hadn't heard about before. Um I don't even know the original. So Fairy, Fairy Tale, Tale Two. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't I don't know what this is. <laughs> is there a one? I didn't know. I mean it's there two, so there has to be one, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about it, but nope. Hey, I'm I'm sure it's for somebody, and that's fine. Yeah, it looks anime yeah. as fuck. So, what's for me is this next one. Oh yes, coming. I've been out waiting of for Jail. a way to play this for so mm-hmm. long that it isn't mm-hmm. on uh, Apple Arcade. Uh, yep. Fantasian, uh, and this is the is Neo Dimension. Um, this is Hironobu Sakaguchi's. Like, uh, he's given interviews saying like he this is his last game. As he thought. It, He's basically, this is it. Um, and his and last game was he, for Apple. <laughs> yeah, and he was hoping that he would be able to do uh, different versions of it going mm-hmm. forward, but he does, doesn't sound like he's planning on doing another big game. Um, this is it. Uh, and it's kind of crazy that it is being published by Square. Right, because so, he left to do his own thing. 20 years ago. Yeah. A little over Some 20 full years circle. ago. Full circle. It's full circle that they are now publishing his latest kind of turn-based RPG and it Nobu Umetsu is the composer like um and the thing that's really neat about the art style of this is all the backgrounds and everything are dioramas and are they ver- digitally like physically created, built or? no physically oh. built dioramas that then were digitally photogrammetry into 3D models oh my god that's really interesting i didn't know that and if you notice yeah you can like 
Now I'm looking what? at it and, and thinking that. Uh, yeah. Really? Um, they they look digital, yeah. but those are those are not. Okay. Uh, you can see some making ofs, and that's like, especially like if you look in the like battle scene, like mm-hmm. that is that is physical model that they have put. Oh, this um, battle scene, yeah, they're like in the grass, like all the yeah. bushes and shit look yeah, real. It's like model train kind of. Okay, this is you can see the mate behind the scenes stuff of this game that went before it came out on Apple Arcade, and him wanting to make little little models and dioramas and digitize those. Mm-hmm. I played this on the Apple Arcade for probably an hour, and I was like, "Nope, I need to." Go. <laughs> um, That's kind of how I felt. Why mm-hmm. I haven't even touched it, and why I haven't thought about touching it. I'm like, I just I want to play this type of game on some form of console, and I think it's coming out on Switch. I th- is it PS5 as well? Probably. I think it's coming out on a couple, but maybe not Xbox. Um, <laughs> There's quite a few of those that are, you know, skipping Xbox. We'll get to one of those later. Yeah. Some consternation. Yeah. Um, um, but I'm really excited for this, and I really kind of can't wait. This is a nice winter, hopefully around Christmas time. This will be my, I can dive into this. I mean, 2023 was a great year. 2024 is shaping up to be quite a good one as well. Yeah. Uh, next one was uh, basketball is coming to Nintendo Switch Sports. Cool. I don't the have that first game, new but... game added to it in a while, right? Yeah, it's been it's been up for a while, and I don't think there's been any up, many updates. There was one that added baseball, maybe or something before. I can't remember. Hmm. What was there was something that was added um, previously, and this is the second time. It seems like. Um, and then we got this game, Mio, Memories in Orbit. This Art style looks incredible. It's gorgeous. It looks amazing. Um, almost felt like a like an inside-like. Um, yeah. Like a 2D platformer, very uh, evocative um, art style. A yeah. creepy. Um, kind of almost hand-drawn. Looking. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Really, really neat. Um, definitely giving me, like... Uh, metroidvania vibes or mm-hmm. um i mean hollow knight vibes in some ways um so you're metroidvania so we got um yep. the one nine souls we've got bow yeah got this. but no silk song i was gonna say maybe silk song that could yeah. just have its own own direct own its own little sure team cherry's like we're doing our own showcase sure yeah we'll see um but this looks neat um and this is sometime in 2025, so it's not even yeah. next year. Yeah, um, which is funny. Nintendo's like, we're going to focus only on games that come out yeah. this year, and no Switch 2. <laughs> well, no Switch 2, but I can guarantee you some of these games will be on Switch 2. So Yeah, including uh, the one we'll get to at the end. Yeah. Um, um, uh, speaking of Metroidvanias, uh, Disney Illusion Island got an update. I nope. wish my daughter was more... And I showed her this like you know many times, and she just has no interest in trying it. <laughs> I was like, this is like... <laughs> perfect but no so there's a new some new some sort of investigation dlc or something uh for this game disney's illusion island so yeah i haven't played it or really seen much of it so yeah um i do know of this next game though um Oh my god. Hello Kitty so Island Adventure. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is another one that's on mobile that I wanted to yeah. play with my daughter but for some reason I just can't get I don't want to like play games on the phone with sure. her or I don't I play games on the phone much either myself. Um, but that's coming to consoles like, uh, and she was just like, can we get this? Like, well, it's coming out next year. Uh, if you can wait, I mean, it's like animal crossing looks like with, yeah. um, uh, Hello Kitty. So, yeah. Uh, and it has pretty sure, uh, have I ever, the only other reference to this certain Sanrio Hello Kitty character since the like maybe when was this since the late 70s have i told you about oh, big, you, we big talked challenges about a couple, yes we talked about this a couple podcasts this ago. thing it's in there somewhere that's great <laughs> big challenges best sanrio character ever um well if you're gonna have a big open game like this you gotta pull in all your deep lore <laughs> pretty much yeah. um uh, I mean, I know it's popular. I know that um, it's doing well on mobile. Man, it really just yeah. looks like Animal Crossing. <laughs> it is. It's that's basically what they're like. Hey, let's take. We have Sanrio as a company has so many, so many characters. Yeah, let's just make our own version of Animal Crossing. Um, well, they've been good idea because they've been doing pretty well. Yeah, 
So yeah. looking forward to that. Uh, My daughter's looking forward to that as well. Um, then we have Looney Tunes Wacky World of Sports. Okay. This looked fucking <laughs> awful. This looked really bad. Yes, um, I agree. I and it, actually thought the art was terrible. Um, I thought the art was it's terrible. Like, terrible. It's really bad. Um, the art direction. Yeah, the um, saturation of the colors. Like, it just really doesn't look yeah, good. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Um, and then I heard someone on a different podcast after this was, you know, talking about how a couple of the ones looked bad and this, including this one. And they were talking about how Nintendo's policy and maybe, you know, this or not, maybe this is bullshit, but that you can't have a trailer where the game is running on anything other than the switch. You can't Correct. have it running on a PC. It has to be running Correct. on the switch. That's Correct. clearly in this direct. There were a couple <laughs> games that were suffering because of that. Yeah, uh, this is one of them. For sure. That was one of them. Yep. Um, Among Us got an update. That's cool. It's still Among around, Us. doing thing. Yeah, it's got an uh, interesting update with a couple of different new classes, it looks yeah. like. Yeah. Um, and this is the reason why most people pegged the direct for the day it came out, because they uploaded something accidentally last week. That oh, had that's the funny. Date. Yeah. Nice. So, <laughs> good job, Inner Sloth. Yep. Um, so good for that. Hope that's still going well. Next is Pharmasia, which honestly, now that I'm looking at it on the, our list here, I forgot about this. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that, I kind of did as well. Um, oh, raise your army of monsters in battle. I see. Yeah, and it's like a farming sim with monsters, and uh, yeah, it didn't send me anywhere. That's for sure. Um, yeah, me neither. And you're talking about like rent switch and stuff like this is one that clearly. Was having some problems. Um, uh huh. Another one. Little little framey. Um. Yep. I think this next one's kind of for you. You probably it, enjoyed this. It is. I'm. I'm. Uh, okay. So this is Donkey Kong Country Returns HD, which came out on the Wii, was re released on the 3DS with extra levels, which I have that one. And that's the one that I played, and it, it's a great game. It's so freaking good. This one and Tropical Freeze are just like top notch platformers. My hesitation is, and maybe this is the reason why Nintendo doesn't let people know who's doing what um, behind the scenes, but this is being done by Forever Entertainment, um, which is a mm. Polish studio that doesn't have a great track record of doing Didn't toys. they just buy them? I thought they... Oh, you know what? Didn't... Yes. Wait. They, they, have, they had a partnership since 2021. Did they buy them recently? They bought somebody. Um, I thought they bought... They could have bought oh, somebody else. I, I thought know. they bought a Florida studio. And I know this one's in um, Poland. Yeah. I was just making... Yeah, this may not be the one that they... Uh, no, Nintendo... This was, oh, no, that was from 2021. Nintendo to give Forever Entertainment significant financial support. A new publishing yeah. deal. Yeah, House of the Dead remake. Panzer Dragoon remake, which critics and players were like, mm, not awesome. Yeah. Um, so... Obviously, Retro's not working on this because they are working on a game we'll talk about later. Yeah. So I, I'm cautiously... I want to see how it runs. I want to see the reviews. If it's if it runs yeah. well, I would, I'll would i pick it up because I love this game. And the 3DS is great, but having it in HD would be better. Yeah. So. Um, well, the trailer at least looks good. It uh, does. Like, it's not, it's not framey like yep. some of the other trailers. Like, okay, it's at least uh, running okay and some for... The chunks that they chose to put in the trailer. So, yep. Um, so I'll wait. It comes out in January, so I think that was released. Yeah, late. it's a little bit, a little bit late later. Um, and then we got uh, Dragon Quest Three HD Two D. I'm here for this, dude. This looks great. I am. I am ready for this, and I'm ready that the uh, people. It kind of had been leaked, but no one really knew what was going on. But fully announced at the end of this, Dragon Quest One and Two are getting HD Two D remakes in um 2025 2025 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you'll have one, dragon quest one through three with i mean back in the day dragon warrior on the right. nes was the first uh rpg i ever played um, oh wow okay yeah um i was incapable of doing anything that as a, in it as a kid um yeah, sure. i kind of lost remember. slimes <laughs> and um i'm I very curious to go back and revisit some of this uh well, apparently this is the one to play. People hail this one as, you know, yeah. almost, I mean, you know, similar to maybe Final Fantasy V or VI, where it's just like, this is where it really started to take off. Yeah. Um, and the HG2D, whew, gorgeous. And it comes yeah. out this year, November 14th. I've been eyeing this one for Fantasy Critic. I don't know if I'm going to pull the trigger or not, but this looks like a pretty good one. Yeah. Um, people are stoked about. So. Uh, 
It'd be, it could be pretty oh cool. HG two D is neat. It's uh, really neat. God damn it! Give us Chrono Trigger in this. I know. Please, for the love of Christ. Uh, where is it? Uh, yeah. Um. The next one is the oh one God, no, that please, looks no. the worst of anything in this direct, and it's the F- Funko Fusion. I don't like Funko Pops to begin with, and I uh-huh. do not need a game based on Funko Pops um, at all. It looked really bad. And, you know, at the point, like, this is the first time that my daughter and I, like, we, it was appointment viewing to watch this direct together, and she was, I was taking notes of which game she was interested in. This was one of them, and I was like, mm, yeah, we're going to forget about that. <laughs> yeah. I, this is not one that I want to pick up. So. No, not at all. Um, but, you know, I don't want to yuck someone's yum if someone wants that, and it's not going to have fun with that, but no, no, no. Some people really like Funko Pops. I do not like Funko Pops. Yeah. Um, nope. Just so much plastic garbage. Um, which I'm sure people say that about video games, so, okay. Yeah. Um, next one, I don't, is Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. It's coming out, uh, in just a couple of days, four days. Is yeah. this one that you're interested in playing? Nope. Are you a, okay. I was wondering Not really, were... I, nope. I have that on my fantasy critic, but I, that was just because I, I feel like I'll deal, do decently well. Uh, mm-hmm. people like this one yeah. and, uh, it looks like a, a decent, um, HD version of it. So, yeah. but now nah, the Luigi Mansion stuff has never been my, never been my thing really. Yeah, I love Luigi, and I've tried. I have tried, and I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't get into it that much. Um, but that, yeah, Luigi Mansion 2 HD, and then we got to the new Denpa Men, which is, I thought it was like a Miitopia kind of game, to be honest, when I saw it. It's an RPG where you can adventure with people as your friends, such people it, as your it friends. It does. So it feels like it's Miitopia, to be honest. Yeah. You can take Really, a, more and... invol- a little bit more involved, Miitopia. Yeah, um. exactly. And I mean, that's very much could be where it started in a stance of being like, hey, Miitopia doesn't exist anymore. Um, yeah. Well, this wasn't, uh, you know, because Miitopia was brought to the Switch by Grezzo. But uh, they didn't, I didn't see any developer attached to this. Maybe I missed it, but nope. this is not Grezzo as far as I know. Um, yeah. Um, what else did we get? Oh, we got a new Metal Slug thing. Metal Slug. Yeah. Was this, a new, was this a new one? Oh, this is new, because they're, they're taking on a tower defense Yeah, yeah. Thing. Um, I didn't know if this maybe was a mobile thing before, but but I maybe not. Um, it's interesting. They had this trailer, and then this same week was uh, Steam Next Fest, and Metal Slug Tactics finally had a demo in, during um, Next Fest. And it was, very, it was really good. It was very um, um, Into the Brink-style tactics. Oh, Into the Breach? Uh, into the breach, yeah. Okay. So a did lot you play of the demo? Pushing. Did you? Yeah, did you I played play it. Or... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, a lot of pushing stuff around, like straight line attacks, and so Ooh, that's a lot cool. of have to. You have to really care about lining your stuff up really mm-hmm. well, and it has just really gorgeous uh, metal slug pixel art, like really detailed animated pixel art um, that you would expect. Dang. Okay. So yeah, it was it was pretty neat. Um, very challenging as well. I'll say that. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I hadn't even heard of another metal slug thing and i know feel like snk is just like okay we have this property people know about it especially of um our generation um yep. because what pizza shop arcade didn't have a slug cabinet in the back of it yeah, totally, um yep. uh so yeah um unexpected but cool i don't know oh it's out now okay was it a... oh i did not catch that it was out now is this i just want to check is this a mobile thing that just came to the switch Cause I just I was How struggling. Comes, it's on it's on Steam as well. Okay, I was struggling to be like, uh, to find. I guess I don't play much tower defense. You know, I think a pa- yeah. tower defense is like Plants vs Zombies, and maybe that's not fucking right. <laughs> um, no, it's tower defense. It's a very simplified tower defense. Yeah, but it's tower trying, defense. Yeah, this looked more in depth than just that kind of back and forth. Yeah. I'm on this side. You're on that side of the screen. Yeah, um, but it's it's there. I'm sure it's there for somebody. Yeah. Not not for me, but. Uh, Darkest Dungeon 2 is finally hitting the Switch um, July 15th. I think I would just rather play that on PC or Steam Deck. Yes. I I worry now about the, you know, I think uh, indie games after a certain year, <laughs> I'd rather play them on Steam Deck. The er, older ones, like our Darkest Dungeon plays fine on Switch, but I wouldn't want to play yeah. the other one on Switch. 
Yeah, the uh, second one has a lot of, like, it's still in the art style of the first game. It matches, but they really, like, everything is like 3D models now, even though it looks 2D. Um, mm-hmm. I'd really worry about what this, how the Switch can pull through on this. Um, yeah. So yeah, the, uh, the gameplay neat. looked very similar to one, but I know that it is. It. Oh, is it? I it is they a, changed it pretty drastically. Uh, gameplay, like the combat, like the the combat is the yeah. same, but the mm-hmm. like meta game is very different. Oh, okay, that's the thing. Got it. The meta game is a a full on roguelike, not uh, not a not a like um Persistent town kind build. Of thing. Yeah, yeah, you're not doing like a town. You're going on journeys, and you're not. How does this work? You're not recruiting multiple different characters of a class you get one character of a class you get their like they are like a named character oh i see and you as they go on these journeys they they need they don't i don't think ever fully die maybe they do i don't know how this works but there there's more like story to each character tied in like from the class side of things mm-hmm. so it is different. I went to a GDC talk on it on how they were like yeah, right. dealing with the fact that people were having whiplash on how mm-hmm. different the meta game is and the structure of the game is different. The combat is not different. Oh, okay, uh, that's interesting. Uh, it's just how you get into combat is not yeah. different. So, um, yeah, like I said, they wanted to make a road trip. Road trip of the damned was the theme of the game. So, not staying in one place, you're moving. That's the point. Um, yeah. But yeah, take your point. Play it on Steam Deck. Probably not Switch, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Um, next announcement was Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack update. We get Legend of Zelda, uh, Link to the Past, plus Four Sword Adventures, Swords. or Four Swords, I mean. Uh, Metroid Zero Mission, which is a remake of the original Metroid. We've got Turok for N64 and Perfect Dark for N64. I'm going to detour here really quickly. Uh, my wife, her one of her endearing memories uh, playing the Nintendo as a kid is playing Metroid, um, mm-hmm. and sa- same experience you had with you know Dragon Warrior, and I had with Faxanadu. You kind of just fuck around the opening areas and don't really progress very far. Yeah. Um, so I loaded up this for her. I had her close her eyes and she started playing, and she was like, "Oh shit, this is the game I played as a kid." Wait, it looks different, but it's the same. And then she played. She played for like an hour. We sat there, my daughter and I watched her play Metroid for an hour, and I was just like, wow, this is really cool. Um, and, you know, when she gets stuck, I would just tell her, like, suggest what she could do, and she was like, I would not have got through that if you didn't have those suggestions, because I'd, you know, basically she didn't have the language for a search action game. Um, she's like, that would have been helpful as a kid. Uh, then we loaded up the original Metroid and played it, and everybody, my daughter, my wife, <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> this is this is a bit rougher. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we had fun with that. It was really cool. Um, yeah, it's a good lineup of games here, to be honest. Um, yeah. Then we get Phantom Brave, which I've never played any of the Phantom Brave games. This is The Lost Hero in 2025. Um, I believe it's somewhat tied to Disgaea as well. Oh, really? Phantom Brave and Disgaea, the same world, the same team, maybe? That's a similar yeah. art style. That would make sense because there's some people in the Discord that I'm in who are just losing their shit over this one more than anything. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And they were talking about how it's always been like second fiddle to Disgaea. Um, yes, so it's the same. It's Nip- Nipponichi. Yeah, okay. this is... Um, that makes sense. So similar art style. It's not They're not tied together. They just... Yeah. Same team working on these two different things. And you right. it doesn't sound like you get a Phantom Brave that often. So... No, that uh, was but I haven't clear. put any of them, so I have yeah. no I no know attachment it whatsoever. Um, is it a? It's looking like a tactics kind of game. I don't know if that's the case, but it is. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that's just kind of what they what they do. This one's like a like more of a free form movement tactics. Um, yeah. So one thing I know about Disgaea is that numbers go up very very high. <laughs> they do. It is tactics that goes up very high numbers. Yeah go big um so that's cool um so so far through this direct we're getting like a run of third party like kind of some big yeah. stuff and some deep cuts so yeah nintendo switch has got a lot of shit coming out and we're not even done with this direct yeah and then we get some really deep cuts on this collection mm-hmm. uh, marvel versus capcom fighting collection collection arcade classics which has x-men children of the atom marvel superheroes x-men versus street fighter Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter, 
Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of of Superheroes, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, New Age of Heroes, and The Punisher. I have only... I, I don't... Did I ever play Children of the Atom, the X-Men? Maybe. I have not. I have not even heard I just of it. know that I played I know that I played MVC two, Marvel's Capcom yep. two. Same. I'm not sure if I ever played one. <laughs> um, I think I've played X Men versus Street Fighter, but I could be thinking of Marvel versus Capcom, to be honest. Sure. Um I only know I... that I played two in college because someone else was really mm, into it in college yeah. and they had it on Dreamcast. So Well, and that's the one that I think most people have played, right? Um, yeah. And that was the one before Infinite came out? Or was there a three? There was not a there was, Infinite was three, right? Or was there a three? There was a three that was mm. not infinite. Fate of Two Worlds. Got it. Okay. It was 2011, and it was mm. on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Got it. Well, I definitely remember playing two. Uh, I heard Punisher was only an um, arcade game. Maybe that's right. Okay. Maybe that's wrong. But this Good may be the first time people can play it. Um, this is such an interesting mix but this is the one that caused the most drama after the, the direct. You may have followed really? that. No, yeah. not at all. Because of the, um, I'm blanking on the name. I'm going to make up a name, like Highline 14. That's not it. But it's the, the architecture they use to build these games. Don't They don't have a pipeline. Capcom does not have a pipeline for it um, to go onto the Xbox. So there's no really? Xbox. For, there's no Xbox. All right. So Xbox fans are fucking pissed. <laughs> um, because I, I believe their argument, if there is an argument, is that one of these games, Cap, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, perhaps, launched on the Xbox 360 or whatever. I don't know. Um, but anyway, it's, not, it's going to Steam. It's going to PS4, PS5. It's going to um, Switch. No Xbox. It's weird. I feel like if they could get it to Steam, they could get it to Xbox. You would think, um, right? Yeah. They're the same. They're close. Yeah. I mean, it's a, much more closer to a PC. But could be wrong. I don't know. Um, well, the other argument is that Game Pass is conditioning people to wait for games to come to Game Pass. So I don't know. Maybe that's yeah. I mean, there is that where they're just they're like Capcom's just like no, that's not a market we want this game in. <laughs> um, uh, you will probably start to see more of those as people are just like Capcom's either so. like we're going to hold yeah. off or we'll do it to Game Pass later. Um, yep. and a year, two years later, when the tail is kind of drying up and we can get exactly. some more money out of this game. Um. Yep. Yeah, guess what? Game Pass isn't going to just all make everything roses for consumers in that way. Um, right, because, yeah, you get a bunch of, you know, a cheap access to games, which, okay. But then because of that, people aren't going to release games on Xbox, perhaps because of that, at least. Yeah. Um, yeah, yikes. Um, looks like there's online play. I mean, it just, I, the art just yeah, is it's, gorgeous. It's, you a, know? it's a full, it seems great from, yeah. like, a, a standpoint of features and getting yep. games in there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I think I'm going to pick this one up. Um, I, I'm i blanking on when the release date was. It's sometime this year. I don't know if they even had a release date. Didn't, just 2024. Okay. I know it's up for pre-order. Maybe some of those. Right, that's why they knew it wasn't an Xbox. <laughs> but um, I don't think it was a date, yeah. I don't know if they dated it in any of the, any of the pre-orders. Um, but yeah. Want to bring uh, us into the next one? <laughs> Super Mario Party Jamboree. My daughter is very, very, very excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that it has quite a few boards. Um, yes. Seven boards, five new, two returning. That's a pretty good mix of boards as opposed to some of the Switch Mario parties we've gotten. This looks pretty darn decent to the point where, like, when my daughter was like, yeah, I really want to play that. I was like, okay, I think there's enough here that would warrant a purchase. Because um, we played Mario Party quite a bit. Um, but some of the ones on Switch. Are... Yeah, I've been, I've been pretty pretty lean. content light content light yeah exactly um, so there's that um after that uh why don't you take us into the next one <laughs> um i i want to say this is it's either this one or the varied game are probably the two biggest things from this direct fuck yeah uh, and this one is the legend legend of zelda echoes of wisdom um and they showed it off and i was like holy crap they are doing it just at the beginning it was like this is the art from Link's Awakening on the Switch. Um, they haven't said who's working on this, and I just wonder they if uh, yeah. Gresso is working on this. Um, That's my big guess. It's yeah. those models. Yep. It's the it's the art. Um, uh, but then this quickly switches, and uh, this is the 
caveat this with an asterisk. The first Zelda game where you play as Princess Zelda, which the first one that Nintendo recognizes still. As, well, and the first one where she's like the main protagonist, you know, um, well, because you can play with her in Spirit Tracks. You can play with her in Age of Calamity, but no, I'm talking about the one, the the Philips CDIs. Oh, was. God, you're talking about. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're there's right. one in there where you play as Zelda. You're right. You're right. And, I, and Nintendo does not <laughs> um, acknowledge that those games exist. Exactly. Um, which one was it? It's Wand of Gamelon? Gamelon? There's Faces of Evil and Wand of Gamelon. I just don't remember which one is. I forgot all about that. Uh, yeah. Um, the Wand of Gamelon, you play as Princess Zelda. So, uh, that's why I asterisk this. Uh, it happened before on a very terrible game, but this does not look like a terrible game. This looks like a very neat game. Um, this looks great. I swear, if it's not Grezzo working on this, I'll eat my hat. It's it seems like seems it. like it probably yep. would be because they did twenty nineteen um, Link's Awakening. Um, yep, I love the approach to this where it's it's Zelda, but it's not a reskin of Link. Nope, she has a a tri rod. She can copy shit. She can use the, anything she copies to solve puzzles. You're just throwing beds all across Hyrule, trying to like she climb. Doesn't, she doesn't swing cliff. swords to fight. Yeah, like like it's very much. I look at this and I'm like, oh, I mean, she is the tri- has the Triforce of Wisdom. It make there's a lot of thematic sense of being like, yes. guess what? A Zelda game where you play as Princess Zelda is more of a puzzle game than a straight. Uh, Hack and slash. Yep. Um, and that's nice. It's nice that they're just like, yeah, we're not just going to do that reskin, like you said. I've just been yeah. like, yeah, it's a Zelda game, you know. It's like, nope, this is new. It has, to me, elements of Tears of the Kingdom coming through in it. Absolutely. With the solving puzzles with however you want. What have you caught? What echoes do you have? And what can you copy right here, right now to help you out? Um, so, really looking forward to this one. It's coming out. September 26th. I can't believe they even dated it yep. already. It's like, and the fact that this hasn't leaked, it's, it's probably Grezzo and they've probably been working on this since leaks links awakening shipped. Yep. Um, or shortly there been, after there have been very small whispers of Grezzo probably working on a, um, original Zelda, but nothing, nothing concrete. It's just every yeah. once in a while, someone mentions it. Um, yeah, the fact that this did not come out was just the the best surprise. My daughter and I yeah. were just losing our fucking minds, and my wife texted me congratulations because she thought it was Wind Waker. Uh, uh, and I was like, no, this is way better. My daughter, the night before, I was like, what do you predict? She's like, well, cat. I, I predict a cat paraglider game. I'm like, okay. And she's okay. like, and a game where you can play as Zelda. That's all she wanted. <laughs> she did not get a cat paraglider, but she nope. is stoked for this game. Um, and I think Nintendo's answered the question that I had uh, as part of this announcement. How do they think they're going to sell 13 million Switches in the next uh, oh, fiscal sure. year? Yeah, oh, yeah. they have a uh, Legend of Zelda-themed uh, Nintendo Switch Lite? Yeah, yep. I'm fucking buying that. <laughs> That's how they do it. I was tempted. I just don't have a reason to get a light. I've been wanting a light. Um, just to have an extra switch as we transition out of the generation for later, if I want to give it to my daughter or whatever, I don't know if I'd give this one to her, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Thing. I'm like, you're like, this one just sits on the shelf and we can look at it. We do not touch it. We look yeah, at it. Look at how gold and pretty it is. No touch. Uh, you haven't seen, you haven't seen pre up this one. Have you? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think I have. Um, uh, but I'm very interested so, yeah. in this. Both of these. These are like these are yeah. the games of the show for me. I know some people game of the show was the last one, which we'll get to. But this this everything I could have wanted. Uh, it's great. Cute, puzzler Zelda, like really looks thoughtful. The one question for me is if it is Grezzo, and if it is the Tears of the Kingdom like that you were talking about, there is so much iteration and thought into use your abilities, but you can't break the game. Um, yeah, I wonder how that's going to go here. Yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah. Did you see the stuff where people there's the kind of like not opening shot, but the Zelda on a cliff uh-huh. looking over the over high roll uh-huh. kind of near the start of the trailer, like a minute, minute 102, 108. 108. Yeah, okay. so, somewhere in there where they're just showing uh-huh. someone matched this directly up 
to the Link to the Past map. Oh, like it wow. is. Hyrule Castle's there. The the rock forest area is there. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see it like, um, you can like perfectly l- align this entire thing to the Link to the Past map. Wow, now, that's cool. I'm just like. I know that the timeline doesn't matter in that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'm like, is this just another game in effectively that world? Um, right. And it'd be really, because yeah, um, haven't kind of seen it in, in this way before. Um, so that was just a neat tidbit that people put together and being like, wow, it, <laughs> it lines, it matches. Um, that's so, that's- yeah. That is awesome because, like, okay, then they know. I mean, they, they know what they're doing, anyways. But like, they know what they're doing here. Yeah, they, they it speaks well for what. Yeah, going. yeah. Um, and then we had that really big high to then just be <laughs> gut punched <laughs> by more just dance. Just dance. Oh my gosh! I mean, there's an audience it for it. It sells well. It keeps it's going. Like, yep. It does. I, you know what? I will say, though, uh, you know, my daughter and I and my wife uh, play this uh, every now and then. We used to play it quite a bit. I do like, and maybe it's new for this version, maybe it's not, there are different choreography levels, easy, medium, hard. Okay. Um, so that, that that maybe makes it a little more accessible for my daughter, doing some of the I'm choreography. Skipping through the through the the songs included, like the little basket, basket case, case by Green yeah. Day. Uh-huh. Oh, boy. Yep. That's, uh, uh, that's where we're at. It's <laughs> That's wow. where we're at in our lives. Our our nostalgia is being mined for just dance. Uh, yeah, I'm just like I would not put das- uh, basket case or any green tea into a dance <laughs> game. I'm just just uh, saying. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, uh, uh, then we got uh, uh, is this a n- new trailer? No, same one. It's the same uh, one, right? As far as it's I just for at least. Lego Horizon Adventures yeah. looks fun. Still crazy that they're doing the Lego Horizon game. Um, I will say the same thing I did last time. I really want them to do more Lego sets. Then um, I got my tall neck. I want my thunder jaw. I want just give me more Lego sets. I will get all of them. Yep. Um. Yeah, it looks fun. It has co-op as well, so that's great. Um, I take it back. I think some of this trailer is different. Um, there's the part where they're making, they're in the village, the Nora mm-hmm. village, and there's like, they built a roller coaster on top of a, a house. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I saw it in the other one. And they have this thing where they're changing costumes, where you see a bunch of the crazy ass costumes. And then the next stage is Aloy or somebody wearing a fucking shark hat <laughs> as they're battling. Okay. So maybe this is different. Um, I just took it to be the same cause I was, we've already seen it. My daughter yeah. is in, we want this. I will not yeah, play it on that. switch. Sorry. That makes sense. Uh, definitely would not be a Switch one for me. But I'm sure the Lego games sell very well on Switch. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, f- another game that is it is not a cat with a paraglider, but you do get a cat game. So she was like, she gets is this a point? new one? <laughs> yeah, she gets half she gets a point. It's got a backpack. Point. Backpack for its uh, robot. Yeah. Uh, Stray coming to the Switch. Um, and looks... Decent. I mean, it's a. Uh, I think Stray is an Unreal game, so uh, visually will be a little bit. I would say muddy. Uh, yes, that's what it looked like resolu- in the trailer. Yep. Resolution wise, but there's parts it, that looked not, a little. It's not real. Too. It's not really an action game, so right. It's a straight. Should be game, okay, yep. even if it's a little bit low frame rate sometimes. Yeah. Um, especially if this is the only way that someone has to experience it. Exactly. Um, probably. Well, a lot of fun. yeah. The the install base on the Switch, man. Yeah, uh, although I think it's on PC too, so maybe it, that strays on PC and PS5. PS5. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, my you know I've played it once by myself, played it through with my daughter. After my daughter saw this, she's like, "Can we play it again?" I'm like, sure, yeah. All it's right, like, it's like a six-hour experience. It's pretty quick, why not? Um, but not on the Switch. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> my God, there's so much in this direct. Yeah, we're not done. Right. We're still going, man. I know. <laughs> Jesus, I just uh, like there's stuff that I've forgotten about. I'm like, oh uh-huh. yeah. Uh, this next game, Tales of the Shire, a Lord of the Rings game. I don't care about. I don't care about farm, farming as a hobbit. I'm sorry. Mm, nope, that's not a thing for me. But I'm uh, sure it's for somebody. But that's what it is. You just described it very accurately. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. It's a cozy farm sim, but you're a hobbit in the Shire. And I'm sure there are people that will love it. Um, well, the trivia... I also don't think I would play this on the Switch. Mm, I'm nah. wondering what's coming out on other things. 
Well, it's Probably private is. division. It's like the last private division game we're going to see, I think, because they're 2K. Yeah, they're gone. Yep. Yeah. So. It's probably on everything for the most part. Yeah. Um, I would in the end. They want to get their money back. Yeah. Uh, then we get a collection of Ace Attorney games. Um, there are so many of these games. I didn't even know. Well, and these are two remastered titles of like his, at, not adversary, but antagonist or whatever. But it's uh, Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth. And <laughs> One of them came out, and then number two didn't come out in the West. So this is actually a new game for the West, at least, the, the second piece of the collection. Uh, I've so only ever played, is it the first one? Yeah, the DS one, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. It's the only one I've ever played. Then that was neat. It was a little logic puzzle game. More yeah, than anything. exactly. Um, I just found them always a little too slow. I've tried. Yeah, there's so many. I'm at the... <laughs> Yes, there are so many. <laughs> I, have, I have the collection on 3DS, I believe. Then it's just like uh, holy cow. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like the this is like they've never been breakout huge successes, but they are very have a very dedicated niche audience. Um, yep. Um, and right, what's this next one? A hundred line last defense academy. Oh right, this is the Dangon Rampa. Yeah, Dangon Rampa. Uh, uh, developers. Uh, developers. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um I'm curious, I'll say that. It's very weird. So right up my alley. Weird anime something. Yep. yep. Um tactics ish. Um I don't know. Yeah. You go to school as the in the last defense academy. Yeah, the news came out that um the the guy who's in charge of this, the studio is instead of doing another game, perhaps even Danganronpa um for Spike Chunsoft or whatever where he didn't own the IP he wanted to own the IP and they I think the quote was something like we put our livelihood on the lines to put this game out because okay. we you know I don't think they said this but like you know mortgaged everything in our lives to get this thing out the door wow um, um so I don't know if that's the best way to run a studio but it's risky it's risky yes um uh and then we got something I hadn't heard about before um a remake of Romancing Saga 2, which I believe is a PS1 game? Or no? And did we? Am I misremembering that we got Romancing Saga on the Switch previously? Uh, we have. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, 90, no, sorry. Romancing Saga 2 was a, was a Super Nintendo game. And was it a Super Famicom game? Because it didn't Super come Famicom. to the West? Super Famicom. Didn't come to the West. It came... Supposedly it's on Nintendo Switch, not this remake of it. I wonder if it's... Huh. Yeah, so it's... It's been on the virtual consoles. Oh, um, uh, okay. Got it. On different things. I don't know if in the West, though, is the thing. The Saga games don't... A lot of them haven't come to the West, or in weird form, especially the early ones. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um... Uh, another um, Final Fantasy spinoff that became its own thing. Um, was Romancing Saga was this a Final Fantasy spinoff? I didn't know. Uh, that. Saga uh, kind of was similar to interesting Ma Mana. They the original Saga came out in '89 for mm -hmm. the Game Boy as well. Um, and it was who did it? Akitoshi Kawazu. What did he? Yeah, um, and I think, what was it called? What was the first one called? Final Fantasy Legend on Game Boy, which I that, do know And of. that became Saga? Yeah. And Final Fantasy yeah. Adventure became Mana? <laughs> yeah. I'm sensing a theme. Um, and again, in Japan, it wasn't called Final Fantasy Legend. Sure, no, of course it not. It was called, what we called? It was called, did the, originally, oh, Makai Toshi Saga um, mm. is the, so, it was called Saga. Um, so, um, it looks yeah. interesting. It looks yeah. I, all the Saga games have been interesting. I've never really got into them, but they are. How would I put it? Um, in a lot of ways, because they usually are like multi-character. Um, yeah, because they said there's lots of lots of characters that you can select and play. Select, and then, yeah, the, ending. The very, different endings yeah i wanted to say is this is very if octopath traveler is kind of a um inspired by saga in a lot of ways 
Um, well, I thought it was specifically inspired by Live Alive. Um, they've I, said that, but yeah, maybe, but, uh, maybe other yeah. influences too, of course. Yeah, and Live Alive probably is very influenced by Saga as well for the interesting different characters, different stories, if I remember sure. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yeah, um, it's pretty neat. It's coming out on October 24th of this year. Um, There's like a resurgence of JRPGs. There's, the Switch is nice to play JRPGs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's cool. Um, and then we got to our last thing. <laughs> and it was about time. Um, oof, seven years since I pre-ordered this game. My, um, oh, shit. My God. And I still have it. That pre-order still holds. Um, You're going to get but... it for 60 when everyone else is going to get it for 70. There you go. Um, Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Uh, uh, it looks like Metroid Prime. It looks, looks really like nice. Metroid Prime remastered, right? It looks very similar. Yeah, a little bit better than remastered mm-hmm. even. Like, mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I think it still holds. My, I heard people online talk, and I could consider this too, that Metroid Prime remastered was the the current team of retro figuring out how to make... Oh yeah, uh, this game. Yep. Like getting them trained in like what what is a Metroid Prime game? What is core to it? Um, how does it play? How does it feel? And um, I'm real excited. Except I don't know if like you say I have a pre order. I guarantee you this is on Switch too, as well. Oh yeah, I bet absolutely. it's both. But I'm like I want to play it on Switch too. Oh shit! So you have a pre order, but you may not keep that one. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Uh, we'll see how it works. I don't. I assume we'll get more info later. Yeah. On how backwards compat works and yep. if well, this just is it is it whatever. just the yeah is it yeah exactly there's a whole slew of things but if there's two different skews like they did with Breath of the Wild yep I want the Switch two skews I'm gonna get a Switch two um or whatever the hell they call it um but, but cool. it looks really pretty I'm glad we got another trailer it looks like Metroid Prime the trailer feels like Metroid Prime it. It was about time they showed something. Because if they hadn't shown something here, I'd be like, I have no clue anymore. <laughs> I was I was surprised that it was 2025. I really thought that um, coming out this fall would really take advantage of the Switch install base, which is what Metroid really does need to thrive. But it's gonna be it's got to be cross gen, so it's probably not. Yeah, gonna matter. it'll be on both. So yeah, but I mean, they ended with that, and I would say this was this is a banger of a direct. Um, and it was long. They showed off a lot of stuff. Yeah, it was a long 40 minutes. Um, and they, they showed, you know, there was really nice Nintendo first party stuff. And then there was so much of it that the third party stuff, which also I thought was pretty good for the most part, there was some stuff that was really eh, more like a marketing thing that they needed yeah. to fill or whatever. Um, that it still didn't make me mad <laughs> about those no. things. You know, like we could have had X instead of Looney Tunes <laughs> basketball or whatever. But we got Zelda. We got a new Zelda. We got a new Mario and Luigi. We got yep. Metroid Prime 4 for the first freaking time. Like, those three alone. Like, you can shovel the rest of the shovelware at me, and I don't. I would not care. Man, I'm very excited. Yeah, I am. Um, Nintendo's going to have a good end of this year, um, into the spring of next year. And Oh, yeah. Uh, so I think we have this direct. I expect sometime in the fall, then, we'll get a direct mm-hmm. on a Switch 2. I agree. Um, and I don't think we'll hear a lot out of Nintendo. There'll probably be an indie direct sometime at the end of summer, but I think their next major direct will be will be a will be later. Oh, they'll probably do a a Nintendo direct focused on Zelda. I I expect that maybe. Like oh, a on 20. on this game. Yeah, just because yeah. every once in a while they do those Nintendo directs where it's like Nintendo direct. Uh, Legend of Zelda: Echoes of Wisdom is. This, Probably something that they'll do on lead up into September. Probably well, and September. And while they need to do a, or should do a direct to explain the game more, they need to do a direct on this game just so they can talk about the amiibo that they're launching for this game. That's true. So we that haven't gotten any new amiibos. It. They there is no planet where they don't have amiibo for that fucking game. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh my god! And I will buy them all happily. Um, Isn't the last one that came out Sora? Yes. And they That's, haven't announced any others, right? 
Not that I'm aware of, because you know Sora was the last one for Smash, but also I know I believe it was the last amiibo completely. I don't think there are any. Yeah, other that was the last one that they had announced. Yeah, and it's now out, and they have none. There's been none other that we're waiting for. They just where there's. I will be just stunned if there's no amiibo. It's so true. Um, crazy. Um, but yeah. Uh, Good direct. I'm pretty I'm pretty happy. I'll be honest. Sorry, I'm choking over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to mute my mic. I'm trying to get through it, and it's not working. Ugh. Um, yeah, man. There's if this is it. Like it hasn't been confirmed yet. I keep thinking about the switch too, and keep thinking about the weekend and how they pushed it out of this year, probably because of that reason. And if the yen continues to be weak against the dollar next year, are they gonna? launch the Switch 2, or are they going to keep waiting? I don't think they can wait too much longer. Yeah. Oof. Or that hardware is going to be uh, obsolete, really. It's almost 160 yen to the dollar. It's so much. Wow. Um, Just floating right there, right below 160. I don't know if it's crossed it yet. Um, it's, yeah, I don't know. They got to do something. They're going to have to do something at some point here. Like, yeah, they yeah. can't just keep delaying. Um, no, especially if it is really done. Like the, the And it's based on hardware that's like, what, two years old at this point or whatever. Yeah. So. Yep. Oh, I want to see it. I want to see it. But I'm excited. There's a lot of things here that I mean, I'm gonna buy. So <laughs> this direct has cost me quite a bit of money. <laughs> but that's okay. That Zelda looks amazing. Metroid it looks does. good. It makes me want to go and play uh, remastered uh, yep. before the end of the year. Yeah. So cool. Uh, cool. Why don't we switch to what um, we've been playing? And why don't you start? <laughs> So I can go get some water while you're talking. I'm going to have okay. you vamp for two minutes while I get water. <laughs> okay. Um, what have I been playing? Um, uh, start of the week, uh, I played some more D4. Um, finishing off some trophies I didn't, that like low-hanging fruit trophies. So I think I only have two more trophies in that game, and I could platinum it. One of which is defeating Echo of Lilith. Um, which will take me some work and eventually I'll do it on probably some season. Just, I don't think it'll be this one. And then what is the, the other one is get five PVP kills, which I could probably do any amount of time, uh, when I want to do it, just spend the time and I'll eventually get some PVP kills. So that was cool. Played that. Um, then, uh, with Larry, uh, we started up, uh, our future RPG backlog podcast that eventually will be coming out and played some final fantasy adventure, not legend, um, which is the first mana game. Um, and I had more fun with that than I was expecting. Me too. I was really surprised. Um, yeah. Uh, and we'll get, we'll get deeper on the other podcast about those things, but, uh, yeah. Um, it had it has a solid foundation of, of gameplay, a pretty varied for what you'd expect on a Game Boy game. I'll be honest. That's, um, that's the thing that surprised me the most was especially with the weapons and what they could do differently. Yeah, uh, from each other. I just kept thinking, oh, the person who was involved in this eventually did Chrono Trigger. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they yeah. did. <clears throat> um, yeah, it makes sense. There's, uh, yeah, just good foundations there. Really ha- have enjoyed it. Um, it is light. It's a simple RPG from that. Like a oh, lot of the stuff that we go back to at that age, and like, yeah, things, the designs of these games, the, um, what they could do was pretty simple compared to where that we've grown to now. Um, but it's neat to see the roots of a lot of this stuff, and it's not like, like I said, I'm having a good time playing it. Um, so that that's been fun. I have the, uh, that whole collection of Mana it makes me want to play Secret of Mana and see what I think of that at mm-hmm, this point. Mm-hmm. Um. But played that, um, and then uh, against, uh, well, not my better judgment, my my son came and was like, put 40 (laughs) bucks down on my test and was like, get the Elden Ring expansion. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Um, He's not even in the expansion. He's just like, no, get it. Uh, He got a bunch of birthday money, and he's like, okay, I want that. Um, And so he's been playing Elden Ring more. discovering things all himself. I'm like, are you looking at guides at all or anything? He's like, no, I'm just going around, um, finding things. He figured out chicken farm on his own. Really? 
I mean, what? someone had to figure it out by accident. He had yeah. Loretta's like arrow. He was at sure. that at that uh, grace right at the top of that where that the farm is. Yeah, and he just had had the arrow like charged, and he saw he clicked lock on it or uh, not lock on. He was able to aim it at the chicken, and it hit it, and it ran off. And he's like, "Oh, and I got souls for that." I'm like, "That's what he told me at a dinner." And I'm like, "Well, you discovered chicken farm." <laughs> um, oh my god! He's like, "There's a name for it." I'm like, "Yes, that is uh, one of the best farming places in the game." Um, if it's you can the do that. reason why I stuck with the game because I was able to overlevel. <laughs> um, but against my better judgment, uh, I played again um, oh. a little bit. Just a little, I haven't played mostly actually leveling and being like, wow, I don't know how to play this game anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, like, what was what do I do? What buttons do I press? Um, um, but it's interesting because I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go both the characters I have, I can just go right into the expansion. I was like, let's see what this is. Um, yeah, there's a reason probably why, like, I, I get that it was critically reviewed really well, but sitting on Steam. People are not happy. <laughs> You've seen the Steam average I for it? I have. Yes, I have. 63. Um, it is punishing. Like, holy crap. Yep. <laughs> just out of the gate, you're just like, wow. Okay. Um, my well, in-game well, character just gets two shot here. <laughs> cool. Um, well, it's interesting because I think it's a pretty bold decision for a company who is in the business of running into business to lock the ability to even uh, enter the DLC behind uh, optional boss Option. that yeah, some pretty hard 36% stuff, actually. of the people actually completed. But then yeah. those people are the ones that are most likely to succeed in a hard um, DLC. And then, well, maybe not actually. <laughs> I mean, it's really, I just did a little bit of, of poking and I was like, wow, things hit you really hard and they have, really really long strings of attacks so it's a lot of dodge 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 or block up. you'll keep your block up for a long time hope you have stamina for it yeah exactly <laughs> because there's not there's some long chains of attacks from things where it's just like i get if people are like generally like i don't know if i want to do this <laughs> um i heard that the it may, ever -night... it may have pushed it a little bit for, <laughs> further yeah. than a person might be okay with um, the ever night or the night in the ever jail there right at the beginning this yep. optional but still it's yep. just like people are getting their shit kicked in it will just stomp you it yeah. stomp you it's real fast um it's it's pretty wild i will say that i was had it there i saw the reviews and i was just like okay what what is going on here and i i get it and i get that there's doing research being like there's an alternate progression system in there yep uh -huh. that you have That's to work to towards and yeah. yeah and like you have increased power by doing that and so um i feel like it will get easier over time if you're going for it and that that's great um but wow first impressions are are it just slaughters you it's like yeah. remember yeah. what you're playing a FromSoft game enjoy it's like okay um yeah people are mad but, that the boxes are so hard and then on on steam it's worse because there is actual like I have co-workers yeah. who play it on PC and they're having awful stutters. And one of them has a 4090, <laughs> like it's a 4090 and a Ryzen 7900 X, like latest AMD processor brand. And mm -hmm. it's like, he just gets frame drops, just huge frame stutters. Um, performance, like really people and are just, it, it, you shouldn't. Um, and yeah. even at this point, like even a, there's streamers that I've been watching playing it and they are getting the same thing on PC. Um, and it, that is a thing where I'm like, come on from software. Like yeah. you've had, and this is the thing they've been getting with the base game for all this time as well. I'm like, you should right. fix this. <laughs> like, um, but they don't. Um, so I, I get why it's kind of mixed there. I think that's, um, I think it just, the difficulty is definitely hitting some people hard. I, I think that will tone down over time, just as anything. Like it's, it's just a, a wall. People will overcome the wall, and it will be, it will, people will talk and figure out the best ways of going about things. And generally, these games just get easier over time. People figure it out. 
and it's well, okay. Do you think the do you think the people are going to figure it out, or do you think that From will nerf something? I don't know if they will. Have they? Oh. Do they have a history of doing that when shit's no. too hard? Mikella no wasn't clue. nerfed, or not Mikella? No. Uh, fucking Millennia was not nope. nerfed, right? Yeah. Nope. They don't. Um, and I think Miyazaki has given interviews this week about the difficulty. Going like this is, and this is where we start talk, talking about creator vision versus audience. And it's like yep. he's been very clear. He's like, these are what the games that we make. This is our vision of the games we want to make. He's like talked about like difficulty is big, is a core aspect of the vision of the souls, like uh, Elden Rings, like their design, they're meant to be hard. That's this is, this is not a thing about um, when we, we talk about a certain level of approachability before, but there's still a thing where they're like, I'm sure they could sit there and say, we could make this even more approachable or easier and get more people playing. But as creators, we don't care. Right. Our vision is this. We're making art, and this is our vision. Um, well, and, I, and I haven't played it yet, but, you know, Elden Ring base game was approachable for a person like me because you could farm, you could overlevel, but also you have the the summon, the ash summons, and then you can also bring in cooperators. Like, you could make you it You can still do cooperators, for sure, in this. Uh, um, but then, but I was going to say the Skadu tree um, leveling up is kind yeah, of another thing there. They talked about how if you continue to collect those, you're going to make things easier for yourself. Yeah, and I've seen that you can collect quite a few before ever having to touch a boss. Mm -hmm. So you can you can get yourself uh, leveled up pretty well for the expansion before having to take on bosses. So yeah. again, that's the stuff people are going to learn and figure out. And like, if you don't want to use those, and you're just one of those people that want to get punched in the face playing these games until you overcome it, well, don't you don't have to collect them. You can go exactly. right for the first boss and try to try to beat it. Um, right. Just like you don't have to use Ash summons, you don't have to bring in cooperators, yeah. etc. But I definitely feel like this is what FromSoft, the games that FromSoft make, and yep. um, I feel like even, I think if there's anything true about this is that watching some of the streamers go through it, some of the bosses do feel a little bit like the design of their attacks isn't nearly as interesting as the design of the base game attacks and patterns. Mm, okay. That's just kind of where it feels like, like, uh, the, you said millennia. Um, that waterfowl I, dance thing. It, it's a fun fight though. I have yeah. played that one a lot and it was like, it's unique. Yeah. There's a lot to dodge, but you can learn it pretty well. Um, just watching the, the bosses in here and none of them, to me, are at that level of mm -hmm. interesting. It's a lot of just like a lot of quick attacks, and you need, like I said, you need to be dodging or blocking, and hopefully you can survive their long ash chain um, yeah. to do one attack back at them and then right. be on the defense again. Like, um, I don't know. That that's where I feel like I'm like, okay, boss combat design doesn't seem as interesting in the expansion overall. Um, exploration yeah. is still really looks really awesome. Um, and I think the the best part of the the boss design, sorry to hop on that real fast, <clears throat> from the base game, uh, kind of stood out to me with Moog, which I jumped in yep. again for Elden Ring like a week or week and a half ago or whatever to get ready for the DLC. Um, and I've just been enamored by the base game again, and I'm just going everywhere in the base game doing shit I didn't do. But Moog, honestly, is like maybe my favorite boss fight of the whole game. Um, and the reason why I say that is because it was fucking hard. And it was still fun every single time. Like, I knew I fucked up. Like, I, I, sure. I'm i the one that fucked up. And to get closer and closer and closer and to finally get there oof, um, was such a rush. And it was just yeah. so exquisitely designed. Yeah. Um, and I haven't seen something at that level from any of the... I haven't seen yeah. every boss, so... Yeah, but sure. I can see it right now people being like, okay, we've had these pretty great fights in the base game. Some pretty cool boss boss encounters mechanics and you're just you don't get that right out of the bat in the expansion <laughs> you're kind of back to basic stuff yeah. um so um i think that would be the only thing that i'm like okay the performance stuff and then that feeling of like okay these are a little bland compared to what we've seen um so it's interesting though i was not expecting the steam reviews to yeah <laughs> to go that Especially that their critical reviews were so good. 94 yeah. on Metacritic. Um, yeah, uh, which is really, it's really funny how this has shifted as well, because all those came out, and Eurogamer gave it a 3 out of 5. 
And mm, people were right. shitting on your gamer for that. Yep. Because mm-hmm. your gamer's calling like, this is too hard. Like, this is a level beyond, yep. like, making a lot of these same criticisms. And people were like, you're awful. Like, this is trash reporting, trash mm-hmm. review. Get good, and, blah, blah, blah. And now the Steam reviews just echo it. Yep. I'm like, hey, uh, how, how we, how we, how, how it's turned a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. so, but I, I did mess around with it. Um, trying to see if I'll, uh, I'm not playing like tonight or anything. I'm going to, it'll be a very light dabbling into the, into it. Um, more than anything. I do not want to be obsessed with the game anymore. Oh my God, um, Anthony. I am so fucking obsessed with Elden Ring again. It's yeah, I don't. Funny. Nope. Nope. Don't want to be there. Oh my um, God. Somebody send help. <laughs> um, but the expansion's huge. Um, That's great. Someone at like they originally from soft, like said it would be, it's about the size of Limgrave. And I'm like, now when you look at all together, it's like, no, it's like the size of Limgrave and Kalid and like one other section. It's, it's huge. <laughs> They're like the flat square footage is uh, the size of Limgrave, but oh, we we go up and down, kind of like yeah. Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> so much stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, that's uh, that's what I've been dabbling with uh, in this week. So this week, uh, and you can check it on the RPG backlog. But I finished uh, Super Mario RPG uh, with my daughter. Um, played probably half by myself, half with her. Fucking game is amazing. It is nice. inc- an incredibly well done, approachable RPG that like has both Square and Nintendo kind of like branching out. Um, Square Soft maybe toning or Square maybe toning down the crunchiness of their RPGs and um, the depth of their systems, and Nintendo being like, yeah, let's make this a bit deeper let's make this a little more in depth um i just loved it just absolutely fell in love with the characters the way that they interact the variety engaging from start to finish um and perfect you know it's 13 hours perfect um bite size rpg exactly what i'm looking for so super stoked about that um and then otherwise boy elden ring deep deep into elden ring i loaded it up because i knew that i had to beat moog to get into the um the DLC, I didn't know if I was going to do the DLC or not, but I wanted to be ready in case I sure. decided to. Um, and so I did Moog, and that was just awesome. Such a great boss fight. Um, over the course of maybe two hours, like, took the learnings and eventually bested the boss. And I just wished that I could do it again. Like, I know I could do a New Game Plus and face that boss again, but I wish there was, like, a boss rush mode or sure. some sort of way you can play the bosses again. Now that I can ride Torrent with the Elden Beast, I would like to do that again <laughs> yeah. without a cooperator. Holy shit. God. Um, but then I've just been going around. Um, just I just go to a Site of Grace, and then I plunge into an area where I don't see any Sites of Grace. And yeah. for somehow, I've just stumbled upon things that are, like, major things. Like, I've popped, like, three or four trophies just defeating um, different characters that sure. I needed to. Or I ran into some, I think it was in the Consecrated Snowfield, perhaps. And I went to this fortress, and there's a Commander Neil there. And you had to beat him to get a medallion to open up the Halig Tree. And I was like, oh, shit. I had one of these. Now I have the other. I can go to the Halig Tree. And then I quickly left the Halleck tree <laughs> because I kept falling up the branches and fighting on those little fucking enemies. Uh, but then I went and uh, wandered around some more, and I've just been thinking more carefully about my build and realizing that because I defeated Moog, I can't get the white mask. So hmm. my bleed build is slightly um, handcuffed. But I last night, oh my god, last night I went into a catacomb uh, beneath the sewers in uh, the royal capital. Um, you know that hole, that well where you go down? Yeah. Yep. So down down there, there's a talisman that gives you 20% um, increased damage if you're near um, blood loss. Okay. Um, so I went down there, and it was pretty hard, but I got around, opened the shortcut, to then I could go uh, back down into the catacombs and solve the catacomb puzzle. I called a cooperator. I'm like, I'm just going to make this easier. I'm going to call a cooperator who probably knows the the labyrinth how to get through the labyrinth um no that was stupid the cooperator that i pulled you pull him at the boss door but i had not opened the boss door because i didn't know what you know i didn't i wanted help to do it 
that person <laughs> did not know how to do it. We went in circles for 45 fucking minutes, went to the same rooms over and over and over and over again until I was like, you know what? I'm going to lead instead of follow. Come this way, went this way, uh, opened up a little, um, the things that shoot fire where you can, um, they go down if you hit them at the end mm-hmm. of like the hallways in the catacombs. Yeah. Stood on that and got to the next section like immediately. And then we went to the boss and just stomped the boss and I got the medallion. It was, it was really a lot of fun, but it was like 45 minutes of wasted effort, which was only topped by Travis and I for a fucking hour trying to meet up so I could, we could trade items. I went and got a staff of loss for him that he needed and we're trying to find each other's fucking sigils on the ground or whatever. And finally, after about 45, 50 minutes, he's like, are you playing on PC? I'm like, no, I don't, I've, I don't have this on PC. I play on PS5. He's like, motherfucker, I'm on PC. Like, oh, I guess you don't have cross-play in this game, which I had nope. not realized. Nope. <laughs> Boy, that was just a comedy of errors that was, you know, uh, documented forever in Discord. Yes. Like I commented there because I saw it the next morning and I was reading back through the whole exchange and I was like, oh, this is a roller coaster. Is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? And then I saw the post. <laughs> oh, I'm on PC. And I was like, uh, I laughed so much at that. I was oh like, God. oh, my God. <laughs> you you <It> too. <laughs> really dumb, but really fun. And, you know, whatever. It was a good time. Um, so yeah, just deep into Elden Ring, like reading fucking wikis again, reading, listening to lore podcasts. I'm like, oh boy, I'm back. There's so much I haven't done yet. And I haven't even touched the DLC. I haven't gone in there to get stomped, um, yeah. trying to level up, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's just a bunch of stuff I haven't beaten yet. And I'm just excited to find the more shard bearers. Like I'm, I'm at a good place where I can defeat those bosses in the base game. Maybe it'll help me shake off the rust for the DLC, but yeah. I think I will still get stomped in a DLC anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's about it. Played a little bit of Stellar Blade, um, and honestly, I really liked it. Now that I'm back into that Souls kind of slow, methodical, be patient. Like I did way, way, way better than last time. So yeah, sure. Yep. Um, and other than that, just playing Fantasy Critic. <laughs> we both have <laughs> two spots left. Yeah, I don't um, have any money, but I got Zelda. Yes, got you Zelda. got Zelda, and you have just enough money to get think, two more I, games. <laughs> I think I did it. At a, I'm trying to think here. Um, you said you bid seventeen dollars for Zelda. No, no, I initially did, and then I erased oh, okay. it, Sorry. and then I went back and put in. What, so I think 11. I did. I think I did eighteen. You did eighteen exactly. So if I would have kept my original bid, you would have beat me by one dollar. But I, I lowered it. I thought you were probably going to go for it, and I just needed to make sure I had money for um, the last two slots. Um, I don't know what's coming yeah, out. I don't, don't know what's know about. Co- yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Now I'm like, I don't know. Um, like, I think the HD 2D of Dragon Quest 3 will do well. Um, but I don't know if there's anything we don't know about that we're going to learn about later in the year that we both be trying to, like, battle for, you know? <clears throat> yeah. I think we know about pretty much every major thing at this point. Yeah. Um, the key part is, is what's not actually releasing this year. Well, luckily, I was able to drop two games. Um, I dropped Delta. um, uh, Okay. I think that's actually coming out this year, though. Well, if it is, you could pick it up. Um, I'm pretty sure that GameStop actually... They said that it was a mistake. Oh, okay. And also the date was a Sunday. So it wasn't a day when shit would actually come out. So that was, I I was like, you know what? I'm going to drop it before Anthony fucking locks me in with his last. I almost, I actually had it counterpicked for a little bit, but I canceled it because I was just Uh, like, "Mm, I'm still unsure if this is risky. Yeah. Because I think it comes out, it's actually going to do very well. Um, I do too. I do too. But I just, I don't know if it's going to come out. Um, exactly. So I dropped it for now. I'll pick it up if it, if it ends up getting. Oh, you took uh, tactical breach wizards. I did. Okay. The okay. the, I will say this in a loving way. The previews or yeah, the pre- I think previews. The previews from a bunch of fucking PC nerds are like they are very excited for this game. Sure. So I think that there might be something there. But I've been burned with indie games. Just look th- look at my fantasy critic, fucking Harold yeah. Halibut. God, yeah, what a dumb choice. But whatever. Tactical Breach Wizards was announced a long time ago. Yeah, it's been a very long time. So yeah, I'm hoping that means a good thing. So we'll see. I'm trying to mix like yeah. the unknown Bellatro uh, high point scores yeah. with like Astrobot. I think Astrobot's going to do really well, etc. So 
It's good stuff. That's cool. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Well, uh, may- maybe you should kind of pick Silk Song, to be honest, because that's the one thing on my list that's still like. Mm, I know. Still taking a I risk know. on that one. I mean, there could be a point where I do counterpick it, but I mean, there's a risk to counterpick still. It's a risk it to is. have for you to have it. It's a risk for me to counterpick it because yeah, if it does shadow drop for some reason, um, it's going to do very well. Oh my god, it's going to be... I mean, my highest scoring one right now is <clears throat> Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree with 94. I it think could be Silk higher than that. It could be, be like, could be, that. yeah, it could be. That's the thing with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. I'm, I may just hold on to that for the rest of the year, <laughs> just out of hope, even though they, Team Cherry will say nothing for the rest of the year. Nope. Um, so it's that one and actually Plucky Squire, which uh, it was not in the Devolver Direct. But I know then it wasn't. A week later or whatever, in the last couple of days, Devolver's been talking about plucky squire the previews have been out people had hands on at game or whatever fucking yeah. play days or whatever um so i don't i don't know man yeah i have nothing to say on that i actually don't know yeah you can't they, use if, your if, insider if, knowledge to kind of pick they, they are oh no, oh no i'm like i don't actually know i haven't looked yeah. into any info yeah. on it oh my god if one day you can't pick it i'll be like oh wait a second <laughs> <laughs> Um, but this is cool. I like having this many games because it's a good mix of big stuff and small stuff. Oh, um, yeah. Some very cool stuff. So I'm a little confused about No Rest for the Wicked, though. It's got a 73, but it still has lines for your score. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, why I'm not it. sure how this is going to work because it was weird. I dropped Hades 2 because right, I which, had it. And, yeah. But it, then it was and they were like, sorry, we're not going to give you a score for this because it's not releasing this year. But then it did have a score. It does. It was weird. I dropped it whenever it had the thing saying that I was going to get nothing for it. Because it's not that it was an early access. It's because Supergiant has said that it will not release. The the 1.0 will not be in 2024. Right, but you would still get points for the early access. Yeah, I don't know what Fantasy Critic was doing. It had the little... Yeah, that's weird. It had the little weird this game is not releasing this year mm-hmm. next to the next to the thing. And it stayed there for a few days. And I was like, well, I guess I should just drop this. Like, oh, that's weird. well, in the end I can override no rest for the wicked, whatever points it is, I can give it to you by the end. So if it stays 73, I guess that's, you know, three points. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. I don't know I'm why it's, it's that low to be honest. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with it. Um, and there's not usually when that when this happens, they actually like have a little thing saying why it's not giving points. Um, yeah, exactly. I even put in a thing and asked them like, "So what's going on?" And I didn't get any response back. So yeah. That's but anyway, note that's... removed, planned. <laughs> We've got two more to fill. Yeah. Um, each. Yeah, I don't know. Well, if you're on Fantasy Critic, look up Prof and Dev Play Games. You will see our lists. Um, it's pretty fun. Yeah. All right. Anything else for the podcast uh, today, Anthony? No, I'm pretty good. Awesome. All right, folks, if you like us, please rate us on your podcast service of choice. Tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your dad. And we'll see you next week where we'll be talking about no presentations because there's got to be no more this week. Um, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a quiet week. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next week, folks. Later, everyone. <laughs>